Say fire! You will now shout this loud and clear. They told Elijah, man of God, come down. So if I be a man of God, let fire pour. The Bible says, every tree that the Father has not planted shall be rooted up and thrown into the fire. Every power assigned to bring me down this year. Can you shout it loud and clear? Receive the fire of God in the name of Jesus. That's right. Command the power to receive the fire of God. Continue. In Jesus' name we pray. Now begin to prophesy upon your pathways this year that anywhere I go, let the favor and power of God follow me. Begin to prophesy upon your pathways. Anywhere I go, let his fire and his power be upon my life. Let my way be smoothened by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Father, we thank you for a morning like this. Accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Father, we praise you because this year you are already making us candidates of mighty testimonies. Accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Right now, Holy Father, open our understanding here today. Lay your hands upon our lives. And as we go into the rest of our prayers this morning, let there be no one who will go home empty-handed. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. A louder amen. Esabasi, God bless you. Before we go into the rest of our prayers, I want you to listen very carefully to this message. We're talking about gamblers at the gate of destiny. Gamblers at the gates of destiny. Gamblers at the gates of destiny. In 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 8. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 8. Gamblers at the gates of destiny. 1 Corinthians 14.8 For if the trumpet give an uncertain sound, who shall prepare himself to the battle? For if the trumpet give an uncertain sound, who shall prepare himself to the battle? In those days, the trumpet was a signal that they used in the military. If the enemy was approaching and soldiers should be put on alert, they've been taught to hear the sound of the trumpet. There's a particular way that trumpet will sound and you know every, you have to carry your war gear and begin to move. All the soldiers have been trained to recognize that particular trumpet sound. If however the man takes the trumpet, he plays it, but it's not really clear what he says. Whether he says, will you sit down or stand up or prepare for war? Nobody knows. So the trumpeter will have become a, a major Confucianist. Gamblers at the gates of destiny. If there is anywhere where anybody should gamble, not at the gate of destiny. Because your destiny is actually God's purpose for your life. Why he brought you here? Your destiny is what heaven has written in his book concerning your life. Your destiny is the expectations of heaven for your life. What heaven expects you to produce before you live here. Your destiny is your prophetic agenda. What you are supposed to do here. It is a tragedy when you don't know what your destiny is or when you are dancing at the gate of it and you do not get inside. It is one thing to die. It is another thing to be killed. 
One thing to die, one thing to be killed. Those who die are those who fulfill their destiny. Those that are killed are those who do not fulfill their destiny. One great prayer you must pray for yourself is that the enemy should not cut off your destiny. And that any power that wants to waste your destiny should be wasted. A man of God was talking about what, it, what, what is known as the destiny of sugar cane. When sugar cane is at the sweetest, that's why they cut it off. They will wait for it to grow, to grow. When it's a little bit bitter, they don't touch it. Now when it's very sweet, at the sweetest, then they cut it off. You will not experience sugar cane destiny. Raise up your right hand and declare. Any power assigned to cut off my destiny, I bury you now. In the name of Jesus, open your mouth and declare it. In Jesus' name we pray. When people went to John the Baptist, they said, are you Elijah? I said, no. Are you the Messiah? I said, no. Are you that prophet? I said, no. Well, then who are you? He knew who he was. I am the voice of the one crying in the wilderness. Say, so make straight the pathway of the Lord. He knew what his destiny was. He did not dance at the gate. Many are toying with their destinies now, unfortunately. This 2009, listen to me very carefully. You have to be very meticulous with your life very meticulous with your life this year. Don't take God for granted this year. Don't allow your life to be mortgaged on the altar of anything evil this year. This is a year of awesome testimonies, multiplication, enhancement, and preservation. How can you now decide to go and mortgage your destiny on the altar of money, sex, and pleasure? It is an abnormal marriage for an elephant to marry an ant. It's an abnormal marriage for an eagle to marry a chicken. If you are a believer, born again child of God, if you start joking with God this year, you will suffer. All the playing around with small, 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 small unrighteousness, better don't do it this year. It will land you in serious trouble. Don't take God for granted this year. Don't take God for granted this year. Don't take God for granted this year. All the roaming around by night, going to useless places, don't do it this year. If you are still coming to a holiness and prayer church like this, and you are drinking, drop that alcohol now. On all this new array of men who are coming here now with large chains on your neck, we don't want your chains. Go and sell it or throw it away. Don't bring it here. The God of Mountain of Fire and Miracles is not interested in those chains you are putting on your neck. Is interested in what's going on in your heart. All the lust of the hearts and the highs this year, drop it. God will not tolerate any argument with the Holy Spirit this year. Make sure you confess every mix up in your life to the Lord. Every mistake you make, immediately you know it's a mistake, confess that sin to the Lord and repent immediately. All the excesses that you were engaging in last year or previous years, drop them now. Subdue the excesses. Settle what you need to settle with God very early now that this year has just started. The reason why God will punish so many people when they die is because they have failed to fulfill their destiny. That's all. You say, well, since you know you are not going to fulfill your destiny, then it would have been better if you were not born. It's important to finish that destiny before you die. If you don't and you die without fulfilling it, you are in trouble. It doesn't matter what they say on your grave. It doesn't matter what they read on your, on your grave when the person dies. Most of the things they say on oh, the graveyard anyway is fake. What we are saying is that you have no right to die before finishing the work God has brought you here to do. So you need to make up your mind. And this is 2009. A year of multiplication. A year of fruitfulness. A year of enhancement. A year of awesome testimonies. A year of divine turnaround. 
you have to make up your mind that I must key into what this year has. And like I was telling you at the crossover meeting, Figonai is an important figure for occultic people. They watch it carefully. It's also an important figure in mathematics. It's an important figure all around. Out of all the numbers, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine is the largest and the last. This is a serious matter. A lot of people are dancing at the gates of destiny. You must stop doing that as from this morning. And those who have been so terribly confused and they have started their battles at early age and the battle is saying, I must escort you to your grave. If you are here like that this morning, your battle started from the womb and they still pursue you now. I decree upon your life that such battles will die now. In the name of Jesus, receive your deliverance now. Receive it. 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 In the name of Jesus. A person is dancing at the gate of destiny when you are not in the right place at the right time. Those are the first dancers. They are not in the right place at the right time. You need to be in the right place at the right time in order to achieve your destiny. Sometimes people miss their blessings because God has packaged that blessing and sent it to the address they were supposed to be. He has forwarded it to their next address, but they are still somewhere where they are not supposed to be. God expects the person to be in one address. And so, he sent the angels to take the blessings there. But the man has refused to get there. He's not there. And he's like, oh God bless me. Oh God bless me. I've already blessed you. I've forwarded it to your address. I said, but Lord, I don't have it. Let me say, what are you doing here? You need to be in the right place at the right time. If not, you are dancing at the gate of your destiny. If you miss your divine placement, you will also miss your divine allocation. Because the allocation is for a particular location. Your location and allocation, they go together. This is a very, very serious matter. And I want you to take this one very, very seriously very very seriously it was 1995 a pastor in this ministry came to me and said Joe I'm leaving this church I said why then somebody has said something to me that I didn't like I said was I the one that said it I said no sir no sir not you somebody else another pastor I said don't go I said I'm going I must go he left that was 95 Last year, he was back. Now, in rags and tatters. Wife dead. Everything upside down. Because he had left his place of allocation. If God brought you to the mountain of fire, nobody comes here by chance. There are people in this congregation now, nobody preached to them to come here. They just slept one night. They had a dream. Go to mountain of fire and they came here. Your location and allocation, they go together. So those who miss their divine location must, as a matter of necessity, miss their divine allocation. Many struggle in life because they miss their location. They miss the place that God wants them to be. If you miss your allocation for two years, you may not get it back in 20 years. You need to know what you are doing. Every child of God has a divine allocation. A proof for him from heaven. Another scripture doesn't call it allocation. It says portion. Your portion. Another word of God didn't call it portion. They call it lines. Lines are falling onto me. Portion. Lines. Allocation. It's all the same thing. See, talking the same thing. Those three words. So, once you are a child of God, there is a particular allocation approved for you from heaven. There is an allocated name you should bear. There is an allocated blessing you should have. There is an allocated wife or husband you should marry. 
Everything is, there is an allocation. None of us is born incapacitated. None of us is born without a star. But it's another matter to walk in that allocation. Many need to pray to even know the location of that allocation. So, beloved, allocation is not really the problem. God can lavish anything on anyone. It's the location. Insufficient allocation is sometimes blame. When, when we should really blame is that you have shifted your location. The Bible said the battle is not for the strong. And the race is not for the swift. If you say get on your marks, get set, go. And somebody took off. And is the first person that took off. It does not mean that he will win. The fact that you got on the boxing ring. And they said, first round, fight. Gave you terrible blows and you fell down. But before they could count the count of ten, you stood up. It doesn't mean we lose. The Bible said the righteous man, when he falls down, seven times, bounce back. It will bounce back. It will bounce back. So, the location is very important. This is not a year you do trial and error. Better pray and know where you are going. Not, let me try this. Let me try that. Let me try this man for a little bit. Try this woman for a little bit. Let me try this business a little bit. No, 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 no. Find out your location and get your allocation in that location. So if you are not where you are supposed to be, you are dancing at the gate of destiny. God came to the garden and said, Adam, where are thou? The man has spiritually shifted from where God wanted him to be. So he was no longer in position. Although he was alive, handsome, beautiful, standing tall. But as far as everyone is concerned, the person has shifted away. And God has forwarded the blessing to where he expects the person to be. Can you raise up your right hand again? And don't let anybody's voice overshadow your voice in this prayer. My divine location. In the name of Jesus, open your mouth and pray it. Masanta kaya mokoposada. In Jesus' name, we pray. You are a dancer at the gate of destiny. When you keep banking on having an opportunity to obey God tomorrow. God is talking to you right now. And I say, well, I will obey tomorrow. You are dancing at the gate of destiny. You are having the desire to do the right thing only in the future, not right now. You are dancing at the gate of destiny. You are taking a non-committal or questionable position on the matter of your soul. Then you are dancing at the gate. Something concerns your soul. You are taking it so lightly. This is why within the next few weeks, we're going to aggressively resume one meeting we used to do in the past. We call it Tari meeting. It's a meeting we normally hold on Wednesday for those who want the infilling of baptism of the Holy Spirit. There's so many people who come to our meetings now who, have, who are not filled with the Holy Spirit. I don't see how you can fight the enemy without that fire. Let me be honest with you. I don't say you are going to make it as a Christian without the baptism of the Holy Spirit. We're going to start that program again, the Tari meeting. Those who want the baptism of the Holy Ghost, they will come and they will pray and the, the fire of God will enter into their lives. Many of the early pastors in MFM, that's where they collected fire. I pray that the fire that cannot be insulted, the power that the enemy will see you and will run, you will receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive it, receive it, receive it, receive it, receive it, receive it in the name of Jesus. You are dancing at the gate of destiny when you think that God will pardon you after death. <laughs> you did not obey me when you were alive. And now you think, well, when I die, will leave me alone. When you were alive, you refused to do what it asked you to do. Dancing at the gate of destiny. You are dancing at the gate of destiny. When you waste your tomorrow by feeding on yesterday, you're wasting your tomorrow 
by feeding on your yesterday. What do I mean by that one? That you keep blaming the past for your life instead of moving forward. You are supposed to learn from your past and then invest your energy on your future. You cannot go back and change your past. It's gone for good. But you can go forward and change your future. But if you are in the back mirror, the rear mirror Christian, just looking back, just looking back, looking back, without moving forward, then you are dancing at the gate of destiny. You are dancing at the gate of destiny when you refuse to always tell the truth. You refuse to always tell the truth. Listen to this clearly, beloved. God cannot build anything on a lie. You are working with a fake certificate. God cannot build anything on you and your fake certificate. You are going about with a stolen wife or a stolen husband. God cannot build anything on your life if you are, if you are doing that. You claim to be married, but there is no foundation, no dowry, no engagement, no court, no church, no mosque, and you are living with the woman. You are a thief. God cannot build anything on that family. God cannot build on a liar. The ninth commandment says, Thou shalt not lie. If you desire to reach your destiny in God, always tell the truth. No matter how hard it is. You will never have true success if you build your life of future on half-truths and lies. I was talking to somebody last week. I forgot to do what I was talking to now. I know it's a group of young people, yes. I was telling them many, many years ago. Many of you may not remember now. There was a panel the government set up called, is it a workshop panel? And sent them to the university. And it's operational. Everybody bring your certificate. Everybody. There was pandemonium and chaos. Because Waik was invited to bring their computers there. Bring your certificate. Those who knew that their certificates were fake, they didn't even bother to show up at the panel. They just ran away. Abandoned the course and ran away. The tragedy of the matter is that some of them were heading towards first class. Some of them have spent four years Many of them were doing very, very well. But they entered with a fake certificate. The day of reckoning now came. And the tragedy is now showing. When you are telling lies, you will attract liars into your own life. You will attract liars into your business. Because you yourself, you are a liar. When you are telling lies, you will lack understanding. Because the devil is the father of lies. When you are telling lies, you will not enjoy permanent success. Because as you are telling one lie, you are looking for another line to cover up that lie. When you are telling lies, you will end up in bondage and failure. When you are telling lies, you become a fool. And that lie will always come back to haunt you. If you tell lies, you build your life on half-truths, false information, you are gambling at the gate of destiny. When you choose your friends unwisely, you have friends, but they are terrible friends, you are dancing at the gate of destiny. It's better not to have friends than to have friends who will quicken your journey to hellfire. Our friends should be people who will inspire us and bring out the best in us. The fact of life is that we eventually become the kind of people we associate with. This is very, very sad. Very, very sad. And you can see that it's outworking, it's destroying so many lives. Many people who turn upside down, they, they turn upside down from the counsel of friends. It is better to be alone than to be with wrong friends. Amateurs will always teach amateurs to become amateurs. It's only an expert that can teach somebody else to become an expert. The Bible says if you move with fools, you will become foolish. If you move with the wise, you become wise. Somebody who used to score zero in mathematics cannot coach you to score a, so score a in mathematics. When you refuse to change your ways, then you are dancing at the gates of destiny. Immediately as a Christian, you stop changing in Christ, then you are prepared to fail. Change is what brings progress. A lot of people don't like changes. But that's what brings difference. 
if you keep doing what you are doing and you are expecting a different result than what you'll be getting, then you are a madman. One definition of madness is for you to increase your speed when you have missed your way. When you are living a purposeless life, you are dancing at the gate of destiny. As many people as are here today, and you have decided, say, look here, man of God, I don't want to dance at the gate of my destiny. I want to move right in. I want to possess my possession. I want everything God wants for me this year. If you are here and that's the desire of your heart, shout it loud, hallelujah. Let your hallelujah roar like thunder. Let it roar like thunder. Anyone who does not want to dance at the gate of destiny, the only thing for the person to do is to run to the cross of Jesus. Run to the cross of Jesus. And stay on that cross. That's all. In Luke 9.23, Luke 9.23, Luke 9.23 says, And he said to them all, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. The same idea is in Matthew chapter 16. Matthew 16 verse 24. Matthew 16 24. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. That's Matthew 16, 24. That's why one of the most powerful songs in Christianity is I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No. No turning back. I have decided. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided. Follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. That cross before me. cross is a powerful symbol. The cross is the central message of Christianity. That cross was the altar on which the once and for all sacrifice was made for man. The cross is rough. Rough. The cross is deadly. The cross is effective. The cross it's a symbol of God's heartbreak over a world that has gone astray. The cross is an instrument of death. The cross is a symbol of sacrifice. The cross will bring out your blood. A tree in the garden 
was the source of all the troubles of man. Because God told them, the day that we take that off, thou shalt die. The tree was the source of our trouble. But the tree of the cross canceled all our debts. At the cross of Calvary, God himself too tasted his own medicine. The cross is the terminating point of our old Adamic nature. The cross is the end of all the corruption of Mr. Flesh, the self. The cross is the takeoff point for a new life. The cross is the gate of the heavenlies. The cross releases authentic power to anybody who gets there. The cross is the battleground where Satan and his kingdom were challenged and they lost the battle. The cross symbolizes rejection. Jesus hanging down on that cross would not see the face of his father again. Say, my father, my father, why hast thou forsaken me? The cross symbolizes suffering and humiliation. He said he was despised of men and we have seen him not. Say, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. All this happened on the cross. At the same time, the cross symbolizes victory. Because it was on the cross that word came out, it is finished. But before that it is finished, will come out. Plenty of suffering had gone on. A Christian who has not gone to the cross is like a student who will not go to school. A Christian who has not gone to the cross is like a soldier who refuses to join the army. A Christian who has not gone to the cross is like a salesman with no customers. A Christian who has not gone to the cross is like an author without readers. A Christian has not gone to the cross. It's like a football player without any team. We as Christians must go to that cross and stay there. Listen to me carefully. Listen to me carefully. Quite a lot of people rush to the deliverance ground. The blunt, blunt truth is this. The only people, let me say it again. The only people who have genuine authority over Satan are those who choose to stay on the cross. Paul said, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, yet I live. So, but the life that I live now, I live by the grace of the Son of God who died and shed his blood for me. And this, the old Paul was dead. This is a new Paul now. That is on ground now. By staying on the cross, you are delivered from all self-seeking, self-serving and self-promotion. But when you go to the cross, there the flesh is gone. Because on that cross, Satan was finally defeated. At that cross, Satan was now completely undone. On that cross, the authority of Satan was cast out. Is there anyone here this morning who wants to reign in life as king? That throne that will enable you to reign in life as king is on the cross. Christ is reigning today because he went to the cross and died there. Immediately you have decided to crucify the flesh on the cross. Satan will cry out to you to begin to feel sorry for that flesh. This is satanic deception and demonic sympathy. Don't listen to the devil. Allow the cross to slay that flesh. Don't feel sorry for it. Unfortunately, many who come to church never live crucified lives. Many believers are living a crossless life. When you are pampering yourself, you are pampering yourself, you spend two hours painting your face, dressing up your body, and five minutes for prayer. It means the flesh is the one on the throne in your life. And that's a tragedy. Many years ago, I was a sister. The mommy died. This mommy was like a public prostitute before she died. This lady flew in from London to come and bury the mother in Nigeria. She bought a very expensive coffin. She dressed her up very expensively. She did her hair. She painted her lips. She made the woman look as if the woman was going for a serious party. And I saw her. I said, look, I just wasting time. He said, I, if, I, if, she, if he dresses up like this, when she appears at the gate of heaven, then just will say, oh, what a beautifully dressed madam. Come inside. I said, no, zero. 
When you take an easy way out, when, when spiritual principles are involved, you are pampering the flesh. You are looking for all efforts to excuse your flesh. All efforts to defend your flesh and vindicate your flesh. The flesh is on the throne. When you think somebody has wronged you and you are feeling sorry for yourself, it's the flesh on the throne. When you are losing your temper and getting angry because somebody has said something, it means you have overvalued yourself. It's flesh on the throne. When pride and arrogance has taken over your life, it means that the flesh is really on the throne and is wearing a crown. When you have no respect for anybody, flesh is on the throne. There is only one place of power over Satan, the cross. It was on that cross and by that cross that Christ overcame. The only time that Satan cannot touch us is when we are upon that cross. The only part of our nature that Satan cannot touch is that part which has been crucified and remains on the cross. Perhaps you are here this morning. Your thought life is not crucified. Your sexual life is not crucified. At any small provocation, you yank off your trousers, you yank off your skirt. Something is wrong somewhere. Your handling of money is not crucified. Temperament is not crucified. Your appetite is not crucified. The only place of power over Satan is the cross. And the only time, the only time, the only time a believer can be defeated is when you come down from that cross. We must carry out interior crucifixion so that we'll be dead and detached of so many things that people run after as if they're going to die if they don't get it. The decision is ours. We have a choice in this matter. We can decide to refuse the cross way, can refuse the way of brokenness, the way of crucifixion. If we do, then we are embracing defeat. And this is where the problem is. The cross is a divider of men. And only the broken can be completely safe from the hands of the enemy. One man prayed a very dangerous prayer. He said, Lord, save me from myself. Lord, let me be lost in you. He said, Lord, let self die and Christ live in me. As many people as I hear this morning, I say, Pastor, I want to stop dwelling. I want to stop dwelling at the gate of destiny. I want to move in. As many people as I hear this morning, I can say, Brother Daniel, I want to stop dwelling at the gate of destiny. I want to move in. I want this to be a different year. Spiritually, materially, physically. Rise up on your feet now. And all eyes closed. All eyes closed. With a loud voice, you will sing with a loud voice. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No. No turning. I have decided. I have decided to follow I have decided to follow. No turning back. No turning back. No turning. That cross before me. That cross be. Cross before me, the wall behind me, the cross before me, the wall behind me, no
Amen. You will now pray the prayers of that man that I told you just now. A strong prayer that he prayed about his life, about his destiny, and God acted onto his prayers. He became one of the greatest men of God on earth. You need to pray that prayer for yourself too now. Let your voice roar like thunder as you cry to the heavens now. These are really the greatest prayers. Because the enemy is only able to gain access to those areas of your life that are not on the cross. Lord! Save me from myself! In the name of Jesus! Open your mouth and cry. Amen. As many people as are here this morning, I know God has been speaking to your heart. He's been saying things to you. You have been disobedient. You know yourself. I don't need to tell you. You know. He's been talking to you, but you have been disobedient. As we pray this next prayer, you better get on your knees. As we pray this next prayer now. He's been speaking to you, but you know, you yourself know. Nobody needs to tell you. You have been disobedient to the Almighty. Sometimes what he wants you to do, you don't do. What he doesn't want you to do, you do. When he says keep quiet, you are talking. When he says give, you refuse to give. You are stealing your tithes. Get on your knees. Everybody will pray this prayer. Including those of us who are on our knees. Say, my father. Kill the flesh in my life. Can you say that loud and clear? In the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and begin to declare it. In Jesus' name we pray. You now pray this third one. My father. Break me and remold me according to your will. In the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and begin to pray that prayer. Break me and remold me according to your will. In Jesus' name we pray. We're praying seven closing prayers. And then you go home with that power and that anointing. Shout this way. I'm going to shout my own. Gates of death. Reject me by fire. In the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and declare it loud and clear. Just reject me by fire. Aha. Masikaya Boshendera Bokonta. In Jesus' name we pray. Say any problem assigned to destroy my destiny. In the name of Jesus. That's right. Any problem assigned to destroy my destiny. That's right. In Jesus' name we pray. So every power mocking God in my life. Uh, somebody at the back down needs to shout this prayer loud and clear. Is that the loudest you can shout that prayer? In the name of Jesus. Paseta kaya bo shendera bo konte. Aha, aha. In Jesus' name we pray. Number four. This prayer has to be done violently. And put your body, your soul, and your spirit in it. When an opportunity is lost in the spirit realm, it's gone for good. 
You may have a second chance later. When you miss a spiritual opportunity, it's difficult to get it back. Even if you have a second chance, that first glory, the former one, will always be better. It's difficult to catch up that first one. That is, even if you are offered the second chance, all the sisters who are here this morning, can I hear you with a loud voice shouting this after me? Opportunity wasters! My life is not your candidate! Can I hear the sisters shouting that again? Is that the loudest the sisters I can shout this today? Everybody together now! Therefore, in the name of Jesus, that's right. Don't allow the enemy to waste your opportunities. Aha, 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 aha. Pata Sataka, Ribaloka Sendeaba. Something is happening already here. In Jesus' name we pray. Three more prayers. Three more prayers. And this particular one, pray it with an enough is enough spirit. Every owner of evil load in 2009, carry your load. I shall not carry it. Can I hear you saying that? In the name of Jesus, open your mouth and pray that one. Aha. Come on, to carry the load. In Jesus' name we pray. Say, by fire, by thunder, I take back everything the enemy has stolen from me. Can you say that loud and clear? In the name of Jesus. That's right. In Jesus' name we pray. Finally, as you go into this week of testimonies, you will now shout this loud and clear. Where is the Lord God of Elijah? Alas! Change my story to glory. Can I hear you shouting this? Can you make sure your voice is louder than that? In the name of Jesus. That's right. Change my story to glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Let your amen be loud and clear. Silence now. Don't say anything for now. There are 20 persons here now. The enemy has been troubling you with terrible nightmares. And these dreams are scaring you. Because anytime you close your eyes, they come. The evil power playing that film is inside, not outside. So right there where you are, power of God is coming upon you. And the yoke of that plantation that has been tormenting and harassing you is broken completely. That's number one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. That's number twenty. Thank you, Jesus. That person here, you have an evil growth in your breast. The power of God will fall upon you where you are, and the arrow that was fired into that breast shall go right back to the sender. Yes, that's the power of God falling upon you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. 
As many people as are here this morning, you will have cause to give testimony this week. Thank you, Jesus.